Treat Williams, a triple threat who came close to becoming a Hollywood star. Actor Treat Williams is a versatile, trustworthy, and well-liked actor. Then it vanished. According to Vermont State Police, he passed away on Monday in Dorset, Vermont, when his motorcycle collided with an SUV that was turning into a parking lot. Williams' days leading up to that day were typical of his Vermont family's life in the country. Williams expressed gratitude for his marriage to Pam Van Sant and their two children in an article published in Vermont Magazine the previous year. I'm really thankful to be living up here and to enjoy the scenery from my window every day, he said. He wed Van Sant in 1988, and they were together for 35 years. He was 71. Williams collaborated with a number of top filmmakers, including Milos Forman, Steven Spielberg, Sidney Lumet, and Sergio Leone, without quite breaking through to stardom. A few notable commercial successes would have been beneficial. However, stardom is frequently a bridge too high, even for a talented and consistently effective actor like Williams, it rarely has anything to do with the performers or their acting. Williams had a successful acting career spanning a half-century on stage, screen, and television, from 1941 through Everwood to his latest appearance, across six episodes of Blue Bloods, as well as a number of holiday specials in the Hallmark Cinematic Universe. The Hollywood component was the screenwriting. The second major component, which was primarily but not totally in New York, was the theater. He was a prince of two cities and three mediums, to rephrase the title of his 1981 Lumet film, and he was also, by all accounts, a superb colleague. I first encountered Williams on Cinema in the Ritz, a ridiculously wide film in which he somehow excels. Williams got his start in Broadway productions with the Andrews Sisters' nostalgic World War II musical Over Here. He collaborated with other rising stars including John Travolta, Marilu Henner, and Anne Ranking on that one. Williams can be seen in the background of one YouTube video at the 2.35 mark. A few years into the long, long run of Greece, Williams also played Danny Zuko on Broadway. After Kevin Klein left the Pirates of Penzance in the early 1980s, I saw his Pirate King, which Williams performed admirably despite the vocal and physical demands of the part. By that point, he had already shown the film industry that he was capable of singing, dancing, and acting thanks to Foreman's 1979 film adaptation of the musical Hair. It more than holds up. Hair was screened during the 2017 Ebertfest in Champaign, Illinois, and it was discovered to be a work with tremendous staying power, largely due to Williams. In the second season of Schmigadoon, Akash Mikago, which is available on Apple TV, Aaron Tviet undoubtedly used his brazenly joyful performance as Berger as his main point of reference. I haven't seen it in far too long. But Robin Williams and Laura Dern portray an adult sexual predator and a young victim in director Joyce Chopper's creepy smooth talk. Perhaps more so than ever, its plethora of dramatic ambiguities are startling. In addition to Hare, Spielberg's epic slapstick farce 1941, Lumet's story of police corruption in Prince of the City, and, in a minor role, Leone's Once Upon a Time in America, Williams received the project near the end of his brief experience with conventional stardom. When an actor passes away unexpectedly, what ifs are unavoidable and painful. Given the opportunities and the resources, he could have accomplished much more. Williams' potential career as a young, energetic presence a decade earlier, a James Caan style 70 second stardom, is as tantalizing to consider. But we are a part of our own time. That meant for Williams a constant stream of depictions that modestly enhanced pretty much everything he performed for our benefit. And the benefit.